Salesforce Ohana Walters 954 here we are going to be making a recipe selection tool um, so once again this is going to be live I will be um, I guess walking you guys through my thought process as I build this out be building a couple different things so I have a few different things planned for this and I'll be writing these down as well so one of the main things is um, having a place to select my recipes um, you know, but I make food during the week. I meal prep my food, um, me and my fiance, and uh, we always struggle to pick what food we're going to eat, remember the recipes, have a list, you know, remember like how we rated it or something like that. Um, so that's what we're going to be working on today. Let me just make sure everything with the stream is up and running before I tackle any of this. Let me see here. Oh, it's running on the, it's running on the other, is it running on the other one? No, it's running on, uh, let me make sure. Sorry for the delay. I tried something new and just to see if it was going to work with the scheduling or whatever. Um, so I will try this out. Try this out. So I know I have like multiple streams or stream settings going. I'll probably cut this piece out, maybe. Hmm, 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 hmm. Not seeing it on YouTube, but I know it's on Restream, so let's try to let's try to figure this out. I think I see what's going on. I think I see what's going on. All right, so that one's pulling up. I need to delete the other one. Please hold. This one's live. You know what? Let's just put it straight to YouTube. Why uh why go through the trouble when you can just do that? So I'm gonna bring this down for a second. All right, let's see if this uh, if this gets kicking over here. Let's try this out. 
Hello, hello everyone. Just making sure the stream is up and running. There we go. Cool. Got it. Um, so yeah, thank you all so much for joining. Um, let me just make sure I've got everything. I was having some technical difficulties there, but as you all know, Salesforce project is on the way. I've got a new one, a fresh new project for us to try out and learn together. And this one is all about um, a recipe selector. So I would love to be able to select recipes. You know, I meal prep my food, me and my fiance. Um, and we always struggle to pick, you know, know what we ate last, pick um, something new for the week that we have made, or maybe, you know, some, I guess something brand new for the week. Um, to randomize it and put some ratings to it because we we you know meal prep every week it's a struggle to try to figure out what we actually want and you know this is something that can be solved in salesforce so we're going to walk through this together how i solved this i have a couple of really cool things planned out for this one um maybe doing some like uh code to randomize some of our selections or maybe even doing it in a flow so who knows we're gonna see how it goes and you know with with everything that we're doing here it's not set in stone it's just for us to kind of learn Salesforce and work together throughout this process so you know it, it's very open ask me any questions if you have any and we will uh, get kicking here so I'm in my trailhead org or I guess one last check let me let me double check that uh, everything is kosher with the live stream right now click on this go to live and that looks good okay all right close all this stuff down cool so um, let's start out by defining some things that we want to have in this app or in for Salesforce to do for us so this starts out by you know just throwing it throwing in the gauntlet know what 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 we want to have done and I guess we'll start with an overall objective and then start uh, th throwing out the gauntlet so I guess we'll do an overview and we want I guess we could do it in a scrum way too as a as a I guess an eater but uh, we want the ability to find um, food selections slash recipes. I'm probably gonna spell recipes wrong 300 million times as we go through this, but anyways. Um, <clears throat> we wanna find uh, food selections, recipes, easily using Salesforce. Um, be able to rate the food we've eaten for the week. And, um, you know, have a random selection. All right. I guess, I guess we'll start with that. We have eaten for the week. Okay. And a couple things, you know, we can call them technical requirements. We can call them whatever. But, you know, this, especially for this video, we're going to define some, um, define some major things that we want to have in this and then maybe even start building out the objects in the apps. Uh, we'll definitely spend maybe an hour uh, working on this. So some things that we just want, you know, we want to be able to rate the food, uh, have uh, recipes stored. Um, and let me stick with recipes. So it's not just food. Uh, we want to have things like when we last ate this, so some sort of date, and that'll be tracking week over week because we can't just, well, I guess we can just put a date on there, but it may be good to put a last date and, and track over, you know, how, how, how we've eaten it. We want to be able to randomly select an item or a recipe. Um, what else do we want to do? It's interesting. I think that's really it. This should hopefully be simple because, you know, we want to be able to 
know all the food we've eaten, rate if we actually like it or not. You know, if it's below some uh, threshold, then we don't want to eat it. I want to randomly select one. Um, I guess we can have maybe the ingredients on there. I don't know. Why not? Let's add it on there for right now. Ingredients. Hmm. And I think that's good enough for right now. As I think about this, and of course, as we go along, none of this stuff is set in stone. You know, if you're if you're thinking of it in like the consulting world, um, you may have requirements defined by certain people. So you know, all of this will be filled out. But I'm the one that's defining it. It's something fun for me to do, and um, you know, let's uh, let's get cracking at this. So. For the recipe selector, what I think we want to do is um, start out by con containing it all in a certain area. So just like how with the COVID-19 heat map that we had going on here, um, we want to have an area for our heat map and all the different pieces to live. Um, so in Salesforce is always that as an app, you know, there's different apps for certain things. So when you talk about service, marketing, any of these, they have concise layouts and tabs and things like that for um, that specific task that you're working on. They're generally split out by like a role or some specific function that you generally do. So I'm going to do the same thing for this uh this object that will, or for this project that we're working on, which we're going to call probably recipes, uh, or like find my food, something funny, Salesforce food, why not? Um, but to start out, we're going to uh, go to the app manager and create a new app to house all of the stuff that we're creating. So I'm going to create a new lightning app, give it a name. <sighs> Oh, look, we already have like recipes up here, and that's for the development recipes. Um, but whatever. Let's do recipes. You know, let's pick a color. I don't know. Green. Cool. A nice preview there. We're going to do standard navigation, uh, desktop, and phone, sure. Um, We'll leave all of those there. Got no utility items. We may want to add one in. Maybe like the co a cost calculator or something like that. Ooh, that's that's something that we can put in. Cost calculation um, based on three or five times a week for two people. So you know, doing. We'll have to input some stuff on the ingredients to ultimately calculate the cost, general cost of it. Perfect, and right now we actually don't have any tabs or anything to add in here because we haven't created any objects or any tabs. Um, so now we're gonna spend a little bit of time, oh, let's make sure everybody has uh, access to this. And you know, as we go through this, feel free to comment uh, either ask me questions on what my thought process is, why I'm doing this, or just some general Salesforce stuff. Like I don't mind, especially during the live stream, answering these questions right now. Um, you know, as we go through this. So I think so. Now we're going to take some time to brainstorm how we are going to logically lay out the uh, objects for this, um, and maybe I can pull up like a flow charting tool. I don't know if it'll be as helpful, but um, and just thinking about the type of structure that we need to house the different information that we want to hold in here. So um, maybe we will pull, pull up a flow charting tool because I think it will be helpful for those people that um, maybe don't do this all the time. Can you use Lucidchart for free? Let me see this. I'm bringing it down to the bottom, but this may be helpful for for people that uh, don't use or uh, maybe new to Salesforce or object design. Like I, I can design a lot of this in my head, um, so it uh, it's it's not super hard for me to you know do this. All right. So it looks like I can use Lucid Chart for free. I am loading up a Lucid Chart. Um, 
I'm looking for a really good chart to use. Org chart, circle map, ERD, database. Now let's try this. This looks kind of good. So I have brought up a database ER diagram, which uh, ER stands for entity relationship most likely. Let's skip this tutorial and see what we are working with here. I kind of want to zoom in. All right, so let's delete this, delete this, delete that. Um, can I change this name? So this is the recipes. And then, get out of, oh, I got some extra text in there. Get out of there. Cool. Oh, I'm just messing this whole thing up. All right, so we're gonna need a couple objects, or we we, le we at least know we need one object to hold our recipe information, right? Like we can't we can't do any of this without some sort of object to hold this info. So um, the first one <clears throat> that we're going to use is just called a recipe, and what this will hold is our general information of the recipe. When we look up one, and uh, I'm gonna look up a recipe that we use all the time: healthy meatloaf recipe look it even like pre-filled in there here we go mama's mama's meatloaf so a lot of this information we want to hold like the name um, we'll probably have a field for the website maybe even somehow get some pictures in there and then the ingredients and how they how they shake out you know and maybe even do the adjustments because these have this will be kind of complex yeah we should do that for sure like the, uh, the, so like if I up this to nine, it's changing these values over here to uh, reflect. That's gonna be kind of complicated to do. That might be fun. Um, so yeah, just you can see uh, there's information here for all the ingredients you need and the directions. We forgot about the directions because what I hope is that we don't have to go back to this website that much to get it done. And a lot of the times the website has a bunch of like annoying junk that you have to go through to get the information. So this one isn't that bad, but if you've ever seen some of the other recipe websites, they are a little annoying sometimes with like a full, you know, somebody's life story behind it. But the main things is that we want to hold you know, mama's meatloaf, a description, a rating. So let's start uh, start defining some of the fields. Um, so we have a rating, and this will probably be a pink list value. We have um, the name, of course. We'll have the uh, description. Anything else that we have on here, website. And then let's see, we could add the ingredients in here as like a, some sort of field, maybe a really big text field, but that doesn't really help us in terms of object design because we'll need to, um, we'll also need to do this. It, it's not easily transferable and it's not easily um, putting all of the information you can't easily see and put all the information that's in there. So it actually may be better to create another. Oh, and they got single, single column ones. Can I change this one? Whatever. <coughs> so like I was saying, yeah, we can um, create ingredients as a child objects to our recipe. Um, and this will contain the individualized info that we need. So, and we can we can go a step further, like defining eggs, and we can see all the recipes that use eggs and stuff like that. So, um, for an ingredient, we can have uh, something like the quantity, and what else do we have for like ingredients? Because normally the quantity is kind of like a, a junction object, actually. 
um, because you'll have move this back down to four so it's easy numbers to look at but it's one tablespoon of olive oil so I guess the junction it's the junction between olive oil as a food item and the uh, recipe itself to say the quantity that it's being used as that's wild that's wild yeah we'll do that um, so at least for ingredients right now I believe this is why I didn't do an ERD diagram or whatever, because it's acting, it's being silly. But anyways, uh, one recipe can have multiple ingredients. And then also what we just kind of realized is that we may need another object that hangs out for food. And that's the actual food item itself, right? And for your food item, it can be on I guess multiple different ingredients and that connects all of these together. The food item is really like, I don't know the name, the price, um, that's really all I care about for the food actually. Um, and then this will have the cost per, per quantity. So you're going to do a multiplication of how much we actually need from it versus the price. And then um, I think that will give us a lot of information there. And then we can have some roll-up fields for the overall cost. And we may not, we may not get that deep because this, is, this junction and doing that calculation is a little bit complicated. But um, we'll see how far we get with this. Cool. Um, so that at least gives us a general idea of the objects that we're going to be using. We want to have a recipe um, main object that controls almost everything. It's going to have some sort of lookup or way to uh, link the ingredients to it. And then, um, you know, we'll also have ingredients which are related to individual food items, which we can, uh, you know, have all the information there. Now that's like a full, full on well-defined uh, data model for this type of flow of things. So now that we kind of know what we want to do, even though it may not be well, as well defined as we need it to be, but we can, um, we can start creating stuff. That's what I love. You know, let's just, let's just throw, throw some stuff out there. So I'm going to start out by creating our recipe object. The plural uh, recipe is recipes I'm assuming um, <clears throat> do we want to have it auto numbered or do we want to have it um, have a regular name and I would think we would want a regular name for it um, auto number does not make sense for this situation we want to call our re recipe the same thing of what it's named over here mama's healthy meatloaf you know um, so there's also, we do want to report on it. Activities, maybe not so much, but we can add it later. Field tracking, sure. Uh, maybe we'll see the time difference between um, if we like the recipe better the second time or the third time. Oh, we're also forgetting some counters on here. Um, count in times we have had this recipe. Cool. Uh, yeah, we want to allow it to search notes and attachments. Why not? And then let's launch a, a tab wizard so that we can add this to our new tab. Um, one thing here is that um, if we do save a new, it will not bring us to the tab wizard. So just be cognizant of that. Let's see if we got any food. We got apples. This is always the hardest part. Not seeing anything jump out at me, so let's go back to the apple. That's the most important, for sure. Most important part, 100%. And then uh, let's add this onto all of our profiles. And here is where we can include it onto the recipes app that we just created. 
Cool, so now we have a recipes object. Um, let's actually go and check this out before we go any further. To see what we've made so far. And if you look at this ERD, we've, we've made the shell of just this recipe so far. Let's switch our app. There we go. Didn't we add, didn't we add our item in here? Why is it not showing? Well, let's go back to our app and make sure that. Make sure that it is updated. Navigation items. I swear we pulled that over, but we must have done it done it to the wrong one. Not a problem. We'd always change it in the end. That's saying that's awkward. Where are you, little tab? Okay, so it's not showing up there. The only other thing I could think was that we did not add the object permissions. Let's try going out to another app and coming back in. Our caching might be on. Wow, this is quite interesting. Some beautiful Salesforce quirks. Okay, we have it here. Let's go check our tab. Everything looks good there. Let's check the recipes object. Or actually, let's check our profile. I think. Is the user under my name? I think that's me. Oh man. Got no record type, so that's fine. We have a view all access. I'm quite confused. But this isn't the this isn't showing on the tab here. It's just me going to the object. All right, I'm not gonna fight with a trailhead org that is like five years old. I'm just gonna go directly to this right now. Um, if we look, we do not have any recipes in our um, recipes tab. So uh, we need to add some. And just like we saw before, it doesn't really have any fields on it. Um, oops, it's caught. Here, let's go ahead and take that name. The first one we're going to add is Mama's Meatloaf. Let's save. So cool. We have technically created a recipe. It doesn't really have much information on it. And that's where we're going to go ahead and add the other fields uh, that we are missing. So um, when we look at this diagram or what we even talked about here before, we're going to have to go back into the object manager, go to recipes and start adding in some uh, fields. There we go. So the first one I want to do is a rating, uh, probably a pick list. And let's go this rating. And then uh, entering in our values, let's do one through five. Five being the best. 
Cool. Um, we do not want to default, and we're not going to require because what if we don't have? Um, what if we haven't tried it yet? We just added it in. Ooh, I should have picked save it next. What we also want to do is uh, add a description in here. Let me bring let me bring this down so I can have something to reference. Cool. Uh, so description will be a text area. And it'll be exactly what you see on there, like um, super healthy, simple version of a family favorite. Why not? And even for our ratings, we could technically do like um, a value that, that gets rolled up. Okay, okay. We have the name, we have the rating, we have the description. Let's have where we got it from. So a website. Mm, yeah, we'll make it a URL. Let's assume that we're getting everything from a website, even though we may uh, we may get some recipes not from a website. We just won't require it. So I'll grab that value as well. Cool. So let's go back to our mama's meatloaf and start filling out some of the information that we have here. So the rating. Where are my pick list values? I swear caching, you know what it is? I'm in debug mode and caching is on and that is what is, uh, let me, let me check my session settings. If you ever run into this problem where like things aren't updating properly, I think it's like, performance. So I'm going to unselect that. So caching basically stores some information on your local computer or your Chrome and that's what allows it to run things faster but it also stores some values that um, some things that um, if they aren't loaded yet it won't know what to do with it. So we can see that one, this tab is in here now. So let's turn that off and then there we go. So it was definitely that with caching. If you do run into that problem, um, that's most likely what it is. You can, you know, if you're, if you're doing tests and working on something actively, I would say to turn it off. But a lot of times in production, you can leave it on because hopefully you aren't changing things too rapidly so that uh, you'll need to have your caching, you know, that often. Cool. So let's grab this description. Perfect. Let's grab this URL. Cool. And now I'm over here building a list of things I can do um, or recipes that I have that are just an easy place to find them. You know, no more giant lists on my phone or anything like that. I literally have uh, an easy place to start looking through and seeing all of my recipes even for this list view let's go ahead and edit some some values that are in here and let's put the rating on there maybe the website so we can get to it quickly cool and then let's let's add one more in what do I like to eat see this this is this is why I'm creating this what do we eat this week lemon pepper chicken recipe Let's just grab this one. And you can see how this is a little bit different. But what I'm going to do is come in here and create a new one. I absolutely love lemon pepper chicken. So I'm going to put that in there. Description. This is kind of a long description, but I think we have the space for it. Let's throw that in. And then the website. This probably isn't the exact one that we use, the recipe that we use, but. Nonetheless, I think you you grasp the concept of now we're putting in this information. We can start to rank them. We can get to the URLs very easily based on uh, the information that we're putting in here. So it works out really well um, as we go along and as we start to track the information that we have in here. Um, so when we talk about 
everything that we need for the recipe. You know, we we kind of have it overall. Just like generally, we know what it is. We don't know what the ingredients are, um, but this is this is the general container of you know if you're gonna have ingredients you need to have a recipe to put all those ingredients in um, so this is where instead of creating a really big text field or something like that we'll create a junction object or a, an object in itself that looks up to a recipe um, that we can that we can then start to have different information on so we're going back to the object manager and that all that all ties back into you know this ERD diagram that we have here and then this the, the abilities that we we want to have um, one thing I'll probably add in I guess super quick for the recipes is a last eaten date so date field last made sounds a little bit better than last eaten add that in for everybody putting it on the same layout refresh this and then for now we'll have no problem figuring out when we last ate something um, this was made this week so i'm going to put it at the start of the week and we can even do some formulas to say you know xyz week or you know start start counting different information let's close this out all right so all of your recipes they need ingredients and without ingredients can't really have a recipe so I'm going to uh, create another object here ingredi here copy that copy that ingredients um, these hmm. should we make it auto numbering or not so the general consensus is if the name doesn't matter about your ingredient then it um, or your ingredient your um, object then you can use a uh, auto numbering generally um, I think the name does matter in this situation because we want to have it be I guess we need to bring back mama's meatloaf or whatever uh, thing we have in here I guess we want it to be named you know this this whole thing Ooh, and we need directions are we gonna separate out directions like step one most definitely all right We're, we also need directions object and you can have multiple directions per recipe and then you can have multiple ingredients per direction ooh we're making this complicated multiple ingredients per directions and then you can also use the same ingredient multiple times at different points of the um, of the process so you would need a many-to-many -many relationship here and I think I'll go forward with this setup and then we will as we go along we'll see if we actually need it like, we'll, we're going full-blown like professional level uh, object model here um, but whatever step uh, this is gonna hold the step and it's gonna it's gonna combine all of these Actually, does this do it? We'll get there. We'll get there. But yeah, we need something that tells us what to do and when. And you can even have multiple types. Stove top versus oven. Man, stuff is super interesting. Cook time. Oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. we need cook time and all that stuff. Prep time and cook time. On our... Um, on our recipe object because we don't want to you know if we're running low on time we don't want to cook something um, we want to be able to filter down and cook something at a specific time man this is this is this is good stuff here how do I add a row oh there it is so we need 
cook time. All the good recipes have cook time. Prep time. And the yield, yield um, should technically be the same. Hmm. The yield's gonna be a tricky one. I don't know if we need to keep it on the recipe or in the ingredients versus quantity per cost. It could all roll roll into each other. This could have a default, or I guess this could have a default quantity. And then based on the the yield we want to do, um, we'll have like a standard yield versus an overall um, you know, the changed yield. Then we'd have to duplicate field fields. So maybe this would have a standard yield. And that's where the multiplication comes from. Wow. So if we, and, and the yield is just, if we need to double a recipe, you know, if the, if the recipe calls for four items, um, you know, that's fine. But if we need to double it to eight, then we need to also double our ingredients as well and what we're using for that. So there, it's the math behind it is the trade off that I'm kind of doing in my head mentally um, that we'll, we'll need to figure out how it works inside of Salesforce. Let me update this coming. Cool, cool, cool. Um, let's go ahead and just continue on creating our ingredients objects for now. Um, so we're going to keep it text. I don't think we need to be able to report on ingredients individually. Nah. Activities, uh, field tracking history, you know, all that stuff. Search for it. And we also don't really need a tab for specific ingredients because they're going to uh, roll under all of them. So maybe we'll add notes and attachments just in case we need to like take pictures or something. But overall, you know, we don't need that. And I like the meatloaf example. Let's go, let's go to let's go back to this one. Now, when we when we look at our ingredients. You know, we we see that there's a name. Oh, we check these too. So it's like, do we have it in the pan or something like in the in the fridge? But we have um, what it is, yeah, the quantity, and what else do we have there? I guess the type of it too: diced versus minced versus ground beef itself. So let's try entering some of these in and see what it looks like before we. Uh, before we go too deep down the rabbit hole here. See if we need to add another layer to it or not. So let's go to Mama's Meatloaf. We see there's a related list here. Oh, first thing we need to do is be able to link them together. So let's add a lookup field. New lookup field. And every ingredient should have a uh, recipe. Like you can't have a recipe without an ingredient. So that's why we're doing a master record detail instead of a lookup relationship. Going over to recipes. Sure. Visible to everything. And we are golden here. This is the, you know, are we adding it to the related list on the recipe object? Sure. Now, when we refresh this again, since we did not go ahead and add this to, um, you know, we don't have an ingredients tab anywhere around here because we didn't create a tab for it. We added it as a related list, and here it is. It's related to a recipe. So when we look at the ingredients, um, you know, we have the ingredient names. It's cooking spray. One tablespoon of olive oil. Less peppers. I wonder how it's going to do this half. It did it. Wow. 
you know, I'm just I'm just copying and pasting everything that's that's in here. Powder ground beef. And the one thing that is actually the interesting piece of this, especially when we talk about yield, is um, when we the names right now or these quantities are hard coded right now. So we would actually need to update that to be some sort of dynamic name um, based on the yield. There we go. I'm just I'm just putting everything in. Catch up. Ooh, what's going on here? Didn't even notice that one. Let's see. He probably doesn't like those wonky. Uh, let's view this. He's got our cooking spray. They're not in the same order that I entered them in, but, and that's fine. I'm just hoping that we have the salt, three fourths cup of ketchup. Where's the ketchup? I think that's the one that bugged out. Anybody see ketchup on here? Oh, here it is. Okay. I think we got it. There's always one, two, it's 12 items here. 12 items there. So we're, we are good. Um, so the next thing is I want to be able to see my ingredients and the details of my recipe at the same time. You know, I don't want to have to flip back and forth um, between those two. And this is a lot of info to kind of like gather up front. It is kind of annoying, but every time we make a recipe, all we have to do is enter in this information. Or if we do do the work of um, bringing all of this stuff together initially in like a spreadsheet or something like that, and then upload it all, that'll be super easy. There we go. Details tab. Um, let's actually leave this in here and then do a single related list. Uh, this is the parent object, and we're grabbing ingredients. I didn't activate it, did I? Did I? Throw this back in here. Save. Oh, I need to change this. Save. Activation. Bring up the screen. Default. Actually, let me go back. It's default for phone because we are going to be using this on our phone. I don't expect to come in here and log into Salesforce every time. Cool. So now that we have our ingredients, we have the um, the general information of what is going on. Um, what else? I think. That may be wrapping it up, at least for right now. Um, I'm going to spend some time, me, I guess me and my fiance will spend some time adding in um, more things that we like to eat and the ingredients behind them. But, um, you know, we are able to at least construct a general object that we can use to drop in this information. And then, you know, after we start filling this out, um, we'll also be able to pull together other sets of information and we may not actually go this deep as like splitting out the food and the directions maybe getting the directions I think the directions will do because that'll be easy but doing this whole model it it will take a little bit of um, you know finagling to get it to work it is the proper it's a proper way to do things but at least for something where we're looking to be able to hold this information it uh, it may not be the best thing for us to, to do but we'll see as we go along depends on what you guys want so do comment down below on what you want to see all right uh, so lastly let's create some directions it won't take long at all Auto numbering for directions. Hmm. 
somehow I keep losing my mama's meatloaf. Tan. Let's create another one. Let's look at the directions that they have on here. Step one, step two. So I think for the names of them, they'll still be like step one, step two as their name. Um, and then we'll have a number field that ranks them in the correct order. I think that'll work. So, uh, so it won't be a direction name, it'll be a step. But there would be a bunch of steps called step one, step two, step three. And I don't like that. But I realized to auto number. It's not the end of the world. It's direction number. So it's going to be DIR for direction. Sure. Starting number is one for the first one we create. Um, or I guess it doesn't matter. Starting number could be zero. Uh, we don't need a report on it. Activities, you know, all that good stuff. It doesn't really matter. We don't think we want them spoiling the searches. But same thing like last time, we can add that in. So let's do that. Let's go to our fields. Let's add a master record detail because you can't have directions without a recipe. Cool, let's go next. Sure, sure. Yep, yep, yep. Um, let's also add the Let's do a text, rich text, or text area. Let's do rich text, just in case there's like bullet points. Um, 25 line, that's good. So this will be the actual direction. And I'm sure if you're, if you're kind of lost, you will be able to follow along right after I finish this last step you'll be able to see everything that's going on. This will be the step. Save. So now we'll need to go back and edit the page. And get another single related list going. Our directions should be good there. So, Mama's meatloaf. We need to add in the directions that we're going to use. Let's bring this down, and I will lose it again 100%. So, we're going to add in, if you can see over here, a new step or a new direction. Um, let's grab all the text that they have going on in there. Boom, and then this is step one. Paste that in there, step two. And this is why we love this recipe, it's super simple. Did I do save a new for the last one. There we go, this is step three. And step four. Good. Perfect. So now um, we're not really seeing a lot in these directions related lists. So let's go and update that um, and update it. So like we're actually seeing a good amount of information as we look at them. So let's go back to the opportunity page or opportunity page. I think wrong with me. Let's go back to the recipe page. Page layout. Since that is the um, we're looking at its related list. Let's add in the direction and the step. 
we are going to sort by step ascending. Oh, and I think, can we take this off? Cool. And let's, for ingredients, we don't have anything else. I wonder if we can show more records. No, it's on there. But if I go back, refresh page, we can see now that we've got direction one. Maybe this should be called step. Uh, but you know, there's a bunch of information that we're we're having here, and I think we can even like wrap the text. Perfect. So now we can see all the steps that's going on to create this, um, you know, as it comes along or as it goes through the process of creating this um, this direction. I think we're going to need to add back the name, the record ID. Remember, it's the record number. And then let's actually go back to our direction. Uh, it's called step. I think we've, we've mixed something up there. Oh, there it is. If we ever need to click back onto the record. So it's step one, step two, step three, step four. And then, you know, preheat the oven, blah, 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 as we go through. And then if we look on the actual record itself, here they are, perfect. You know, we're gonna start with our directions and our, and our um, it, it looks weird because this is actual direction. Um, but yeah, we're starting to know all the stuff we need to actually get this done. And, um, you know, there's a couple things that we could actually add, more things we can add to this. So like, um, we'd need aluminum foil, but, that's like a, what is that, like a requirement or something like that. But yeah, there's a bunch of stuff we can add to this, but really overall, this is, I guess, all we need to be able to start to put in our ingredients, get the recipe location, and um, you know, start to at least track some of the, the info that we have on here. Um, I may just add, you know, we could do like a rating sub object and all this other stuff. We could get as fancy as we want to, but at least to start, the major things we need is the uh, recipe itself, where we got it from, when we last ate it. That's one of the most important things. All the things we need to make it, um, and then how to actually make it. Um, so I think, you know, for today, we have accomplished a lot and we've learned how to kind of break down um, some aspects of, of a random request. So let's, you know, we can strike out some of this stuff. How do I strike out? Formatting probably, text, strike out, alt, shift, five. That's a large combo. Alt, shift, five. So we've been able to, we have a filter rate on our recipes, one through five. We can um, store all of them. We know when we last ate one. We know the ingredients that we have on here. I think we'll probably work on the random selection next because I feel like that'll give us the most value over you know calculating the cost or anything like that, um, which is it is important. But I I care about selecting what the heck we're gonna eat more than how much it costs. Right? We spend more time deliberating about that. Um, and count how many times we've had this recipe. I think we may be able to solve that. Um, but we'll need a, we'll need some sort of child object or something like that to, I just figured out how we're going to do that too. So that one, that one could be fun as well. Really fun. Um, but yeah, um, I think we made a lot of progress here. We're at least able to get started with this. I'll probably preload in some information in here with some other recipes that we like. Who inside you got things like side dishes and all of this stuff that can really go in um, to this, you know, because what if lemon pepper chicken does recipe doesn't have a side? Well, now we need sides to pick from. Is it vegetables, rice, chips, whatever? Um, and that actually may be where record types uh, could come in. So I'm just dreaming up a storm here, but um, does recipe have side? Um, and how we solve all of that, because we, we could have a record type that has 
has sides and a rectal type that doesn't have sides. And for the ones that don't have sides, you need to pick some sides. Um, so that's super cool stuff. And, you know, this is what Salesforce is all about, especially with this type of um, series. It's, it's really about solving your own personal problems while learning Salesforce. So um, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, it's been really great. And if I've inspired just one person to pick up Salesforce and start learning and working on some stuff themselves, that's, that's what it's all about. Um, make sure to hit this like button. If you like this video, comment down below on some other crazy ideas that we can do for um, this particular project. Or if you just have any general ideas on how to improve. So maybe if this BRD wasn't as helpful or if I should have came prepared with one, stuff like that, just let me know and I'll, I'll try to incorporate that in the next video. Um, thank you all so much for watching. Remember, I believe in you.